how did you get into this business, first of all? I guess from an early age, I decided I really enjoyed fitness um, first for myself. And I just liked the whole process <clears throat> of figuring out how to change your body, how to get in shape. Um, and then from there, I took it a step further on how to program extra workouts for myself. And then I would try them on my friends. And it was fun, just a kind of a hobby. I just always loved working out. And I just kept taking it each step further. Started training at the Greenwich YMCA when I was 17. Uh, just helping people out, walking around, getting to know people. Um, and honestly, being an introvert helped me get more comfortable. Like, I had to push myself to get out and talk to people. Yeah. And then from there, I just, uh, I kept wanting to go further. Like, I kept reaching every little goal. Like we talked about the other day, I set for myself, and I reach it, and then decided what would be the next step. So, eventually, I decided the next step would be, um, you know, creating my own business, Curcio Training, and then just working for myself. So. So, you work with, obviously, a lot of different people in different, you know, situations, right? So, I take myself on one end of the spectrum and you have like, people who are probably very competitive athletes, uh, bicyclists, whatever you've done. Tell us about your Ironman competition as well. So I started doing Ironmans about probably I've done six of them. Um, mm -hmm. The first one I decided to do, I just, I did a triathlon and I thought it was easy. It was a little sprint. So instead of like taking the next logical step, I going to Olympic, I decided just to go to Ironman. Um, so, cause you know, that's how I roll, I guess. So um, it was probably the hardest thing I ever did. Um, it took me, um, the first one took me like 11 hours, but I was young, stupid. So I just used aggression and uh, powered through it. But then from there, I started learning more about the actual sport and how to train properly, um, you know, um, nutrition and then took that little step further and kind of dialed in and how to not hurt myself as I got older. Yeah, for those of us who don't know what that means, what, what does the Ironman, uh, what do you actually do in an Ironman competition? So it's a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a 26.2 mile run back to back to back. That's... So <laughs> it's a good workout. It's a good day. Right. But as I said, when I was younger, I was able to just use, you know, anger and caffeine, they just go as hard as I could, but yeah, I had to learn how to use nutrition and eat what the right foods were. So uh, it got harder, but I also improved. Uh, I got faster as I got older, um, you know, so it's been quite a good experience. Yeah, yeah. I imagine a lot of that too, no matter what kind of shape you're in, has got to be, you know, between the years, almost like golf where you, I mean, you have to be mentally stable as well or strong, right? To get through something like I, that. I think, yeah, I would honestly say um, you go to some, you know, when you're feeling good, like in the beginning, um, you know, the gun goes off, everyone's running the water, I was excited, there's music, it's, you know, you're, at first I'm like, I'm at, I couldn't believe I was doing it, I'm like, I can't believe I'm here, so, but then all of a sudden, about four or five hours in, when you're like at mile 70 of the bike, then it starts, that adrenaline starts wearing off, and then you, you know, you can go to some pretty dark places in your head, telling you to stop, to quit, it hurts, um, you know, I've had times when one race I never forget. I made it uh, through the swim and through the bike. Uh, I was in Cozumel, Mexico. It was hot, and I made ten miles on the run, and I just couldn't. I couldn't go any further, and I basically sat on a bench and just sat there for about twenty minutes in like a weird kind of um, almost like a meditative state. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to get up, I couldn't. People were trying to tell me, "Come on, you can keep going." So. Um, I took me some time to kind of get myself together and then decided, all right, I have 13 more miles or whatever, whatever the distance was. I had a, so that one took me a good 14 hours to finish. It was horrible, but I still finished it. I want every part of me wanted to quit every fiber of my body. <laughs> so, it doesn't sound like fun to me. I gotta be honest with you. No, I, I, well, I think what I do like explain that a lot of people see they have an Iron Man tattoo or the, you know, you have a logo and they think Iron Man is an aggressive some people are cocky and arrogant, and I, I like the other end of it. I want to be humble mm -hmm. and share that. Like, not everybody is that really super A, type A, intense uh, triathlete, you know. I'm not making money doing it, so I don't need to be a jerk while I'm doing it. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, that, I guess so, with anything, let's hope, and I, I, know, I know you well enough to know you're not a jerk, so. Right. 
Um, but you do, I mean, this is something you do for a living, you know, in terms of training people. So, I mean, that's a business, right? So you're running a small business pretty much. Right. Right. And business is you. And at the end of the day, you're dealing with a lot of, like I said before, you're dealing with people in, who are in different places. So you have to, uh, you know, be patient with, with and, and, and kind of learn what people, where people are, I guess, in terms of their, uh, fit, their fitness and their training. Right. All, all different levels. And I think by me doing this in the past, it, it's taught me how far your body can go and how hard to push. And it's made me, you know, and I tell my clients, I really do know what it feels like. I'm not just saying yeah. it like, you know, um, I do know, and I can help get you a little further, push you a little further and bring you back, you know, whatever, whatever direction we're going in and, you know, doing a safe environment. Like, so, um, right. using myself as an experiment, maybe we'll call it that. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, right. I mean, you're, you're going to push, but you're not going to, you're not going to drive people into uh, submission or, you know, to the point where they don't want to do it anymore. Um, uh, but you right. mentioned something very important, I think, a minute ago, and that was the environment. Now, obviously, our environment has changed in the last 14 weeks, and uh, oh, yeah. and, and you, I'm sure you've had to adjust. How have you adjusted? I'm sure with all the gyms being closed and whatnot, uh, what have you done? Well, like we said, we talked about the first – I turned it into a positive. The first two weeks, yes, everybody stopped. I was really, really panicked. Um, you know, I didn't want to harass, bother people, but I keep reaching out. So I just started posting workouts, let people follow them. Then I, um, I just kept at it and saying, uh, what everyone's comfortable, I would do whatever I needed to do. FaceTime in homes at a park. And slowly but surely, um, I started doing more FaceTime training, which if you asked me four months ago, would I be doing FaceTime training? I hated it. I hated FaceTime. I hated seeing myself, hearing myself on camera. I just, I just had to do it. And then I got really comfortable and I decided I'm the one who controls the environment. So if I'm comfortable, I can make everyone else comfortable. So I'm just trying to keep everything as normal as possible. And I just tell everybody, we're still working out, still the same, wherever we do it. It could be, you know, in a park, in a room, um, on FaceTime. I just have to lead it and keep everybody comfortable. And I think that really uh, worked out. So I just started getting busier and, um, Things are going well now. I'm very lucky. Good. Good. Well, and you, you got to, I mean, especially in this day and age, and you have to adjust, right? You got to, yes. you can't be married. If you're married one thing, you, you might be out, you might be out of a job or out of business. A lot of people are, are, are readjusting, you know, their resumes now, obviously to, uh, to fit other molds. So, right. um, so you, uh, you know, obviously you've got the experience, you've, you've got the, you know, the business, the business is yours. Um, you know, you, uh, you have a set of clients or clients, I'm sure that it kind of changed and you, you'll, you'll train people, um, wherever they want to be trained. So, you know, we go to the track now, which is right. great for me. Um, you'll also go to people's homes and, you know, fortunately here in, in where we live in New Canaan, there's, there are a lot of people who have home gyms. Yes. Um, yes, very lucky. Right. Yeah. So let, let's touch on, on the nutrition side for a second. We've never, you and I have never really gotten into that in depth. I know. That's a, that's a, tr a tricky one. I think um, I can, like, you know, I'm not really a certified nutritionist, but I really feel like I like the basics. I, I think, well, what do you want to ask me about? Well, what, you know, what would you say? I mean, to me, so it's a lot of it I think is going to be common sense. But, what, you know, if we sat down and I said, you know, well, what, walk me through a day. You know, what should I, I mean, should I be counting calories? Should I be counting carbs? Should I be, you know, what do I need to do to, 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 to improve, to get better, to lose weight or to get in shape? I think your diet should be sustainability. If you can, you know, a lot of these diets start out and people will get all excited and they get into it and then, they realize it's hard work and there's, it gets harder. So if you, you know, most diets fail because people can't sustain that type of eating. So I, I really think it's just basically making healthy choices. And the basic motto is calories in and calories out. If you're taking in more calories a day than you're, than you're burning, then the scale is going to tip, right? So now I also realize people have different health issues with slow metabolism or thyroidism or whatever that is. And then I try to get into that, but again, that takes me out of what, I should be teaching. So, um, you know, I give people ideas on what they could do, lower their carbs, lower the sugar. So, um, but I think the biggest goal is like just keeping away from the processed food 
and the sugar um, and keeping it healthy, like natural sugars, you know, fruits, vegetables, all the basics, I think. Um, and I've been doing it that way, you know, pretty much since I was in my 20s, right? So I can easily sustain it because it's not too radical. Mm-hmm. I know Iron Man is radical, but not my eating. <laughs> so, um, and that to me is it's it's great, and I agree with you. And it's it's just like common sense, you know. The it's you, what you put in. If you don't burn it off, then then it's 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 not a good thing. So, but so you're really kind of um, obviously trainer um, guru. You know, you're, you're 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 also a motivator. You you like to motivate people to achieve their goals. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. I, um, I try to, you know, it's hard to stay positive, especially now, right? But I mean, mm-hmm. what other alternatives do we have? I guess, you know, um, I like seeing people accomplish things that they don't think they can. Even yeah. if, you know, I have a girl now that I'm training. She's younger. She's in her, she's probably 14 or 15. And she has, um, I don't know if I forget the word, if it's PSOD, it's something where her body produces too much testosterone at that age. So she has to get medicine in her body. So she's really fighting. And she's gaining weight. She can't stop. And she has, it's getting really tough. And I, I'm trying everything I can think of. And I keep saying, we're going we're gonna to achieve this goal. We're going to get there. And some days she's good. Um, I'm in contact with her mom all the time. And I just, you know, I really want her to achieve her goal. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do to help this girl. And it's upsetting to see that, you know, as yeah. a teenager. So I like to help. Again, it's not all about pushing people so they break down and they don't want to work out all the time. It's about keeping them going any way you, I could, you know, you can think of. Yeah. So most people don't want to be yelled at. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't. No. I got yelled at enough when I played football. I don't need that. Me, yeah, exactly. And I, I see it all the time. And it really eeks me to watch other people do this and sometimes could give us a bad name. Yeah. So anyway. Let's talk for a second. Let's go back to the situation, the coronavirus and what it's done. What, um, do you see people going actually back to the gyms and back? I mean, or, you know, would you think people will be more cautious? That's a tough one. Um, mm-hmm. As we know, I left the gym uh, that I was at, uh, Halo Studios, and decided to go off my own because I'm not sure. It seems a little – I don't know what the regula- re- regulations are going to be if you have to wear a mask and gloves, um, limit how many people can go in at a time, constantly cleaning equipment or who was there before – so um, it's going to be a little bit, I'm sure you get people who definitely will go and they don't care. You know, you get different levels of, of what people are comfortable doing. So for what I'm doing, and I think I see a lot of people now outside, people figuring out how to work out in their, you know, in their garages, in their rooms. And I just see the whole industry changing, you know. Yeah. Um, but again, who knows, smaller gyms might do better than the bigger ones or uh, until they figure out the vaccine. So it's a, it's a, like any other bit, it's a tricky question, right? Yeah. No, and we don't have all the answers, but it's interesting, you know, I mean, because I, I don't know how those, some of those gyms are going to survive, to be honest with you, because I do think personally, I think, you know, people are going to be very wary and memberships are going to go down. I mean, but um, that's another. It is. Yeah. It is. I don't know. It could be a lot. There could be loss. I mean, who knows from lawsuits to people getting sick and wanting to show a gym to like, yeah. Just a little stuff. So, but but you, I mean, in terms of you and your business, you've adjusted to where you can, you can, you're amphibia. You you're somebody who can be uh, at the track at the high school or in somebody's home or even on a street, and you can you can do the uh, you know the weight training if it's that or or the aerobic stuff. So, you know that I just adapt, yeah, I adapt to the environment. You know, keeping it in smaller groups, I think it's safer. So. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I adapt to what people need. I kind of figure it out and then go from there, basically. So uh, we had a gentleman on who you actually know um, pretty well, a gentleman by the name of Tom Laidlaw, who was... Who, <laughs> who we did What's up, Tom? <laughs> so so you're, you're following in Tom's footsteps, and he's also, he's amazing with when he's up at 3 o'clock in the morning walking in the dark, and he's... Uh, yes. He's, yeah. He's a motivator. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's trying to motivate people as well, which is great. So Bill, um, where can people find you? And, and I'll, you know, we'll put this in the text also, but tell us where they can find you. So if you go to curciotraining.com, okay. uh, that's my website and that has all my 
information, my number on there and my email. And, um, or you see a black Jeep driving around New Canaan with skull and crossbones on the side. <laughs> That's me also. But I got to be careful of that one. So, uh, but yeah, CursioTraining.com okay. uh, is my website. All right. And um, so anything else you want to add while we're, uh, while we're still on? Anything top of mind? No, I thank you for, I appreciate it for you having me on, uh, Dave. And um, again, I, I feel like I've, I'm very lucky to have adapted to this. Some people haven't. Um, yeah. But I think, um, you know, I truly like, like and, and enjoy motivating people uh, to the best of my ability. I might not be the smartest guy, but I think I really think about what people need and their wants, and I kind of analyze that and just um, go from there. So that's pretty much it. And you have two daughters, right? Two daughters. I have uh, Sophie is graduating high school. New Canaan High. Yep. She was a captain of the cross country and the track team. Nice. So she kind of took our, you know, I can't even keep up with her anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and then Shady uh, is going to be uh, a junior at the high school. Okay. Good. So. God bless you on that. And uh, <laughs> three women and, and you're, you're kind yep. of like the last man standing TV show. So. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> so. <laughs> But that's that's all good. I get outnumbered. All. I got a dog, so he's my friend. There you go. There you go. <laughs> like, Let me see the shirt before we sign off. I gotta show your shirt. There you go. That's what we're looking for. Curciotraining.com. C U R C I O Curcio. I apologize. Um, so, Bill is good. Is a good man, um, and uh, we appreciate him taking the time today. And um, thank you, Bill, for your time. Thank you, Dave. All right, buddy.